When this film is not obsessed with tying up every little loose end of the franchise's overarching plot, it refreshingly takes cues from Saw 2 and goes full-on bottle film. It is also during these segments where the film successfully reconnects with its five strangers in search of an exit roots. This is also the entry where sadistic cop Hoffman officially becomes our new big bad. I used to hold Saw 6 in my top three Saw films before I rewatched it, and uh, I gotta say it dropped down a peg since my last watch. I was left with a bit of a detached feeling this time around, which was surprising due to its compelling subject matter. Without a doubt, this is the Saw film with the most to say. Finally, the franchise about a maniacal dying man tackles the healthcare system. It does so strictly by dissecting and overtly criticizing the insurance companies. This entry mostly apes on the Saw 3 format, a main protagonist of sorts moving from room to room while being forced to make a series of choices. There are some strong moments, mostly Tobin Bell scenes, and some memorable ones as well, the most notable one being the carousel trap, which is definitely a fan favorite. The sadistic game show continues, and this time in 3D! Although this unfortunately adds a glossy, unreal look to the film that may ruin the experience for some viewers. The performances are good though. Sean Patrick Flannery fits well in the lead, and a police detective played by Chad E. Danella of Final Destination fame adds some quirky flavor to the bunch. I was certain he had gone to the Brad Pitt School of Acting though, because I'm pretty sure he's doing a Detective Mills impersonation through the whole movie. This seventh chapter in the series also has the most downer of endings, but the plus side is that we finally get to see the reverse bear trap pay off in all its glorious gory. In closing, I'd say that Detective Hoffman gets a bad rap because he has to be the most ruthless killer cop to grace the screen since Maniac Cop.